Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mushak, and today I'm going to try to solve the delicious bubble tea programming problem on Caddis. Um, I'm a Northeastern freshman, and this was a problem from the Silver Husky Competitive Programming Contest, Contest 1, from yesterday, September 13th. And as you can see from the results, I think only one person solved it, so it seems difficult. I did not participate in Silver, I was in Gold, but I think after reading this problem, it seems like a pretty interesting problem, and there's something you might not realize, even if you think you know how to solve the problem. So, I yeah, that's because of that. I feel like it might be useful to see the solution to this, just so that, if because if you don't know how to solve a problem, and you still don't know how to solve it next week, then you won't really improve. So I think showing the solutions to some of the harder problems might be useful, so that you know how to solve similar problems ne come next week, and you can do better in the next competition. So yeah. So let's go through this problem. Bubble tea is now one of the most popular drinks in Vietnam. Nowadays, walking down on the street, you can find a bubble tea shop everywhere. A huge number of bubble tea brands have arrived. Blah 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 blah. Bubble tea attracts students not only as a tasty drink, but also with various kinds of extra topping. Blah blah. Okay, I'll stop writing the statement here as I need to get some bubble tea immediately. It's so addictive. Okay. Um, after teaching a philosophy class to Vietnam students preparing for IPO, PVH invites students to enjoy a cup of bubble tea. Tea shop sells. Okay, let's actually take notes. I'm gonna use Python here because I usually see people's plus, but um, I think Python will be more understandable. So the tea shop sells n kinds of tea and m kinds of topping. Okay, every kind of tea and topping has its own price. Okay. Every tea's topping has its own price. For each student, PVH will buy them a cup of tea with exactly one kind of topping. The cost of cup equals cost of tea plus cost of topping. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, however, not every kind of topping can be mixed with every kind of tea. Each kind of tea, we know the list of toppings can be mixed with. Okay. So for every tea, there is a list of valid toppings. Okay. Given the amount of money PVH has, he would like to know how many students he can invite to the party. If one student drinks exactly one cup of bubble tea, remember he never watches students drink bubble tea without drinking anything, so he must buy himself a cup of bubble tea first. Okay, so PVH, whoever that guy is, um, has finite amount of money. He wants to maximize the amount, the cups of tea he can buy. That means he wants, so if you want to buy as much tea as possible, you want to minimize the cost of a cup of tea. That's not written in the statement, but like, it's kind of something you have to figure out yourself. He wants to minimize the cost of a cup of tea, because he wants to buy as much tea as possible. Hopefully that makes sense. And then, um, so he, uh, what's the answer here? Oh, so I, before we read the input, I like to read the output actually. So write the maximum number of students PVH can buy bubble tea for. So we want number of students. So number of students equals. So one student drinks one cup of tea. So I think number of students equals cups of tea. Let me read this more carefully. No, no, no. He has to buy himself a cup of tea first. So it's cups of tea minus one because minus one represents the cup of tea he he buys for himself. So number of students is cups of tea minus one. Let's let's put some spaces here. Okay. So he wants to minimize the cost of a cup of tea. Um. This is also an implicit equation, which isn't written anywhere. But like, amount of money is greater than or equal to cups of tea times cost of one cup. That's just. I hope this makes sense. Like. It, it, the cost of one cup times the number of cups of tea is the amount of money it's going to cost. So, like, you have to have more money than that. That's basically where that equation comes from. So, what that means is, because we want we want no number of students, and to know number of students, we need cups of tea. So, we're going to solve for cups of tea in this equation. So, let's, let's switch sides, actually. So, instead of saying it like this, let me... I'm just going to switch the size of the equation, so I'm switching the inequality around. So, so cups of tea times the cost of one cup is less than the, or equal to the amount of money he has. So cups of tea is less than or equal to the amount of money over the cost of one cup. Okay, so that's the, so 
max the maximum number of cups of tea because we want to maximize the amount of tea we buy is the amount of money over the cost of one cup and then uh, instead of putting one slash and put two slashes what the two slashes means is that let's say it's 4.5 you can't buy 4.5 cups of tea so the double slash makes it four so example 49 double slash 10 let me actually show you this 49 double slash 10 is four because if you have 49 dollars and a cup of tea costs ten dollars you can only buy four cups of tea you can't buy 4.9 cups of tea that's not that's not a thing. You can't buy 0.9 a cup of tea, unfortunately. Yeah. Also, just so you know, I don't know if I mentioned this yet, but I'm using Python 2. Uh, Python 2, basically, Caddis has this thing called PYPY. Um, let me see if I can find it. Caddis PYPY. Yeah, so for Python, so what implementation? Uh, we're using Python. We are currently using PyPy to run your Python programs. PyPy is considerably faster than C Python in most programs. I think C Python is like the Python I'm running on my computer. It's just like the normal Python, but has a limited module support. So it's not normal Python. They use PyPy, but it's close enough. So I'm just going to use C Python to test it on my computer. But basically, what this means is that Python 2 is a lot faster than Python 3 because they don't use PyPy for Python 3. So if you're doing Caddis, you should always use Python 2. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, so this is this is basically what do we need to do? We need to find the minimum cost of one cup, calculate the number of cups of tea he can buy, and then subtract that by one, so we get the number of students. So yeah, so now we need to actually figure out how to post the input. So I need to actually read the input. Um, oh, this is actually useful. Before I read the input, I like to read the input last. Um, the amount of money is between one and one billion. All the numbers in the input file between one and one thousand. So what that means is that um, the cost of a cup of tea, the number of teas he has, the number of toppings, um, the, all of those numbers are going to be between one and one thousand. But then x, which is the amount of money he has, is going to be between one and one billion. That's important to know because knowing like what what the maximum size of your numbers is is going to estimate. It's going to help you estimate how much time your program takes, and that's useful to know in case you've got a time limit exceeded there. You can try to estimate how long your program is taking to figure out where where's the bottleneck, where's the slowest part of your program. So that's really useful to know. Okay, so first line contains the amount of kinds of tea, pretty standard. Second line contains the price of all kinds of tea, that makes sense. Next line is the amount of toppings, and then same thing, price of toppings, that makes sense. And this is a little more complicated, basically. Um... Line starts with an integer k followed by k integers. Okay, so we need to we need to read in number k and then we need to read in k more numbers. Okay, all of these integers are between one and the amount of toppings, so they all represent one kind of topping, which is valid with t type i. Okay, that's really good to know. Um, so that that's kind of abstract. So let's actually read the sample they give. Okay, so you can kind of see the first line is three, and then there's three costs of tea. So tea type one is ten, I don't know dollars. Yeah, so ten dollars, twenty dollars, thirty dollars, and then you have five types of topping. So topping type one is one dollar, topping type two is two dollars, three dollars, four dollars, five dollars. Pretty standard stuff. And then this line means that tea type one is valid with two toppings, four and five. Tea type two is valid with three toppings, one, two, and three, and t-type three is just valid with all five typing, for all five toppings. Okay, so they actually explain how to, this is actually really nice, they actually explain how, how they got the solution. Um, so the cheapest combination of t and topping is 14, because it's the first kind of t with the fourth kind of topping, and then they explain, okay, so obviously if you get like a t of, that's cost $10, and a topping that costs $1, that's clearly the actual cheapest. But, like, that's not valid, because T-type 1 is not valid with topping type 1. So, you can't do that. You have to mix T-type 1 with topping type 4, because that's the cheapest combination, which is valid under the constraints given by these three lines of the input. Therefore, if you have $14, if you have $42, and one cup is $14, then you can buy three cups of tea, minus one, which is two, two students. Okay. So, that's pretty standard stuff. So let's actually try reading input. So what's the first thing we need to read in? Um, 
number of T types. So num T's is oh sorry. Before I do anything, I usually import this that allows us to read standard input, and then I read in all. This basically reads in hey, read in every all of the input and then return it as a string, and then I say hey. Split that input by new lines and spaces. So what that means is, it's gonna give us an array. And that array is gonna be say, the first element is three, second element is ten, third element is twenty, the fourth element is thirty. So basically, every single number is gonna be its own element in this new array. And that's really useful. And then, but that's gonna give us a list of strings, which can be helpful sometimes because sometimes you do need to post strings in some of these uh, problems, but here we just have numbers. More specifically, we have all integers. So instead, I would say, hey, int for every token, for every token in this list of tokens, because it's good. when I say token, that's like one string, that's like one part of the input. Every token represents an integer. Three is an integer. One zero that represents the number ten. Two zero represents the number twenty. So for every token, convert that token into an integer. And then I would say that's our that's our input list. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna say that's our list of integers. So that's our int list. Okay. And then to get the next, to get the first integer, we say next int list. So this gives us, hey, give us the next integer. That's what that says. Let's show you that this works. Say print numpties. So um, let's actually let's do this. So we have our sample input right here. So I'm gonna make a test file called test dot in. And let's put that there. Um, and then we're going to run our Python file with test.in. Just to make sure, hey, are we getting the number of t's correctly? And we are. There's three types of t's. That's exactly what we wanted. So I'm testing that that very small part of our program actually works. Because that's kind of important. We, if we don't know the number of t types, then we're kind of lost for the rest of the thing. So that's a good thing to verify. And then for every t type, there's a price, remember? So... Let's do this. Okay, so I'm going to make an array that stores all the T costs. So let's call that T costs. And then I have to read in the next integer. And that integer is going to represent some T costs. So let's just add that to the lists. And then let's, oh, and then let's print T costs just to make sure we're reading in that array correctly. If I do that, I get 10, 20, 30. That is all of the T costs. 10, 20, 30. So that is correct. So we, we verify that our t costs input reading is correct. And then, I think it's num, oh yeah, so this 5 represents the number of toppings. So I'm going to say number of toppings is the next integer. And then, we kind of do the same thing. So every topping has a cost. And then, so for every topping, um, get the next integer. And then add that to our list of topping costs. Okay, and then once we do that, um, I'm going to verify that that works, so, okay, yes, so um, there's five types of topping, and then the cost of one, two, three, four, five, in that order, that's correct, okay, so we're good so far, and then we need to read in, the, I think this is the hardest part of the problem, actually, um, we need to read in all of this input, and you can say, hey, we can just make a list of lists, right? That's how we can store this data. I'm not going to do that, because I'm not going to store this data at all. Because if you really think about it, what we need to do is we need to go through every um, type of T and every type of valid topping, and we need to figure out what the cost of that T and topping is. If that's the cheapest cost, then we store that and say, hey, that's the minimum cost of a cup of tea. If not, then we just ignore it. So we can just go through this input, read it one by one, calculate the cost of every T and topping combination, and then store the minimum cost. So we never actually need to store this input as a separate array, which is very convenient. We can just kind of do it in one pass, one go. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to store this data in its own array. I'm just going to read in this data, calculate the cost for the T and topping combination, and then store the minimum T and topping cost. Okay, so we need to know the minimum cost of a cup of tea. So let's say we, we there there is no possible cost of a cup of tea. What is the minimum of the empty set? That's basically what I'm asking. You. What is the minimum of nothing? So this is just a convention, but the minimum of nothing is infinity or some really big number. The reason 
uh, we say that is because, um, let's say, so we haven't read any class of T so far. So once we read in the first T and topping combination, that is automatically going to be our minimum because that's the only T and topping class combination we know so far, if that's the first one we read in. So we always want to make sure the first T and topping combination we read in, that becomes the minimum. And the way to ensure that is to make sure our initial minimum is way greater than whatever the first T and topping combination could ever be. So that's why we say the minimum cost of T or the minimum of anything, really, before we know be, or before we've read in any data, the minimum of any, the minimum of the empty set is infinity. That's just a convention to make coding easier, basically. So, yeah, basically, whenever you're trying to take the minimum of a list of things, you should always initialize that minimum to infinity in order so that your program from then on works correctly so that when you get the first uh, cost of t that automatically becomes the uh, minimum because your initial minimum is infinity hopefully that makes sense but that's just kind of a standard technique but unfortunately i don't think infinity is actually a thing in python maybe it is but it doesn't matter because infinity is just a really big number for my purposes or for our purposes so um what's the maximum cost of t it's between one and a thousand and what's the maximum cost of a topping? It's between 1 and 1,000. So it's the maximum cost of a sum, 2,000. What's a number bigger than 2,000? Um, 1 billion. So 1 billion, for our purposes, is basically infinity, because this is a really big number, and there's no way the cost of one cup of tea is going to be $1 billion. It's just not possible. Although, a $2,000 cup of tea, like, that's still really expensive. Like, yeah, I, I guess this isn't really a realistic problem whatsoever. Unfortunately. Also, he has $1 billion. He's totally a billionaire. Anyway. 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 Okay. So let's actually start reading these inputs. So there, how many lines are there? Um, there's one line for every type of T. Okay. And then what is the first number? The first number is the number of valid toppings that can be associated with T type I. So uh, num valid toppings is the next integer. And then how many more numbers are there? K, or in this case, num valid toppings. So we need to make another for, another for loop. Also, I hear, notice I use J here rather than I. That's because I is already taken. I is being used in this for loop. So if we use I again within the same for loop, it's going to mess things up. So don't do that. I actually did that in the last competition yesterday. That's kind of why I got a 20 minute penalty. Uh, actually, there's several reasons. There's several long submissions I did yesterday, but one of them was because I used the variable i within a for loop where I was always using the variable i. So don't do that. Don't. That's not a. That's not a good. That's not a good idea. Always make sure your variable names within for loops are different. Okay. So then, what is what is the number we're reading? Four and five, what do those numbers represent? They represent kinds of valid toppings. So I'm going to say the valid topping is the next integer. Okay. And then what is the cost? First, what's the cost of the type of t? What's the cost of t type i? Well, we have an array called t costs. So the top of t type i is just the ith element of t costs. Hopefully that makes sense. We have this t costs array. The cost of t type i is t cost i. And then what's the cost of valid topping? It's the same thing. It's just topping costs, valid topping. Now, what's wrong with this? Let's say we have five types of topping. Then uh, topping costs, as you can see, is one, two, three, four, five. And then, so let, let me actually get my pipe on top of it. And then, okay, so what's the top cost of type four? Well, that's the fourth element, right? That gives us the cost of type 5. Why? Because in Python, arrays are zero-based, but in the input, topping and t-types are one-based. So, in order to fix that, we need to convert this one-based indexing to zero-based indexing. So, we, in order to do that, we just subtract from 1. So now let's say, okay, what's the fourth cost of... What's the cost of t-type 4? It's 4 minus 1. That's four. That that that's the correct solution. So we remember to subtract by one. Otherwise, we're gonna get an error, an out of bounds error. Okay. Now, what's the cost? So we know the cost of t. We know the cost of topping. What's the cost of one cup? Uh, do we have an equation that says that? Yes. Okay. We we add 
the tea and topping costs. Okay, so cost of cup is cost of tea plus cost of topping. And then, oh, this should be the minimum cost of a cup, not a minimum cost of tea. Okay. And then, is that the minimum cost of a cup? Well, we basically, to update a minimum, you just say, hey, it's the minimum of the current minimum and the current cup. Actually, that, that, that is correct. That is what we want to do, but I think that might not make sense to some people. So here's another way to do it. Um, let's say the minimum cost of a cup of tea is greater than this cost of a cup of tea. Then clearly, if it's greater than a cost of a cup of tea, then it's not the minimum anymore. So we need to update the minimum and say the minimum cost of a cup of tea is now this new cup of tea, which is cheaper than anything we've ever seen before. So to update the minimum, basically, if the minimum is greater than the current cost of the cup, then make the minimum equal to the cost of that cup. That's just a standard technique. Okay. Oh, so now we know the minimum of the cost of a cup of tea. Um, let's actually check that. Let, did we actually calculate that correctly? That's kind of important. 14. So they see uh, cheapest, cost of tea, tea, cheapest cost of a combination of tea and toppings, 14. So we did something right. So yeah, I, th I think that's good. I think we're good with, I think that part of the code is good. And then what's the, um, what are we actually trying to find? Oh, number of students. So first we need cups of tea. So we remember it's amount of money divided by cost of one cup. What's the amount of money? The amount of money is the last number in the input. So we just say next in the list, and then we're done reading the input. That's the amount of money. Actually, let's make sure that we actually got that in right. So we should get 42 because that's the amount of money in this input case. Good. Okay, so we did that correctly. And then, okay, so cups of tea is just amount of money divided by the cost of one cup. Okay. And then um, number of students is just cups of tea minus one. We, because we minus one for um, the actual teacher. Let me just print num students. And you got the correct answer. Two. Great, right? Um, sure, but like, like that's not we we tested it against one test case, so like, um, let's actually try to make our own test cases. So, one test case I can just generate randomly. So, here's a test case. This is the test case they gave us. I'm gonna make it my own test case. So, how many types of T do I want? Um, I just use random numbers sometimes to generate test cases. So like, um. That's a lot. I don't want to deal with that many types of tea. Um, that's not enough. There you go, 10. Okay, that's a good number. I should have just picked 10. Um, and then, uh, so every type of tea can be between 1 and 1,000. So I'm just going to generate. Hopefully you've seen people do this before. Um, basically I'm just generating 10 random numbers. Yeah, so basically what I do is I generate a random number between 1 and 1,000. I convert that to a string. That's this part. And then the 4i in range 10, that means I do this 10 times, and I make a list of them. And then the um, the space dot join thing means uh, make them a space separated list. So, yeah. Then I just copy and paste this into my input. Um, and then we need, okay, so let's just do this again. So five, oh, okay, that's a good number. And then we need five topping costs. So yeah, so just five, and then here's the type of all the costs. Um, here's all of the topping types and then we need 10 lines 10 different lines for like um the number the types of valid toppings for each type of t so how do we generate that randomly um there's a lot of ways you could like ge randomly generate a five bit number um i'm not going to do that because that sounds complicated um instead let's just generate random numbers between one and five and then Go from there. Okay, there's four types of topping. I'm gonna say instead of doing this randomly, I think it's just easier to say like one, three, four, five, and then like okay, one, and like four, and then uh, one, two, five. So it's valid with all of them, and then again valid with all of them. Yeah. Three, um, what toppings do I want? Um, how about like three, four, five, and then four, um, how about just one, two, three, four, 
How many? So this is type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We need 3 more. So how about 1, 2, 3, 5, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 3, oh, 1, 3, 5. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, that's good. And how much money do we want? Some number between 1 and 1 billion. So. That's a lot of money, but yeah, cool. So that's just that's just how you generate a random test case. It's not great. It's not. There's probably a better way to do this, but like, it it works. It's fast enough. Okay, so let's run our program against this a test case. So we get he can invite so many students, like five million eighty-eight thousand forty-eight students. Is that correct? Let's check. Okay, so I'm gonna do this one by one. I'm going to calculate the cheapest cost of T and co copying combination myself, and then I'll bet you, so independently of my program, I'm going to try to do this by hand, basically. It's not that fast, but like I think it's worth it, just because that way you know that you and your program got the right answer, so either there's a problem with your thinking, so e either your program is correct, or it's a fundamental problem with how you thought about the problem. So yeah. Um... So with T type one, I think the T uh, cheapest topping cost is forty one here. So six eighty one plus forty one is our cheapest cost of T so far. And then eighteen plus three ninety one that's for type two. Clearly that's less than six eighty one. So that's our cheapest so far. And then three fifty nine plus two ninety seven that's for a T type three and topping type two. That's clearly bigger than this one. So that's not that's not good. Um. And then one, two, three. This is T type four is valid with all of them, but it costs um, four eighty three dollars. So is four eighty three plus forty one would be the cheapest. Um, that's bigger than our current minimum, so that's not good. Um, T type five it costs nine seventy eight dollars. That's way too big. So uh, yeah, no, that's not cheapest. Uh, T type six is one fifty two, and it's valid with typing type three. So that's one fifty two plus forty one. That's definitely cheaper than eighteen plus three ninety one. Um, T type seven is valid with one two three four. So the cheapest topping is valid with is forty one, but it's really expensive. So no, sorry, three thirty eight. So it's it's still more expensive than one fifty two plus forty one. So that's not valid. T type eight is ninety seven dollars. That's more expensive than one fifty two plus forty one. So that alone disqualifies it, regardless of the toppings it's valid with. Two forty, same thing. It's more than one fifty two plus forty one. So that's way too expensive. Three fifteen is also greater than one fifty two plus forty one. So that's also way too expensive. So our cheapest T and t cost G. Our cheapest combination of T and topping is T type 6 with topping type 3, which is 152 plus 41. That is 193. So we have this much money. If we divide that by 193, how many types, how many cups of tea can we buy? 50,088,049. Okay. Uh, we got 50,088,048. Oh, that's because we subtract by 1 for the teacher. So that is correct. We got the same answer as our program independently just by doing it by hand that kind of that shows that our process of the program is correct but it shows that our process is correct for a randomly generated test case this is probably not an edge case because like edge cases are unlikely so let's think of some edge cases oh this you know at the beginning there's some i said there's something interesting which if you don't recognize that at first it can make you really frustrated so here's the annoying test case let's say there's one type of t Cost a thousand dollars. Can I say there's zero toppings? There's zero toppings. The no, I don't think that's allowed. Is that allowed? No, that's probably not allowed. There's one topping that costs a thousand dollars. Um. So there's one type of tea. It's valid with topping one. You have zero dollars. What is the answer here? Negative one, that's not correct. You cannot invite negative one students. So how did I come up with this test case? Basically, um, I tried to make these simple as possible. So basically, oh, there's one topping type, it's $1,000. One T type, there's $1,000. Th so this just make things as simple as possible. And then what happens if you have no money? Well, how, actually, what happens if you have well, like $1? So you can't really buy anything. So you, it says you invite negative one students. So that's clearly 
a bug now program. That's the kind of edge case you need to be thinking about. What if you have a lot of money? I think this case, test case kind of validated that we can deal with lots of money. And what if you have very little money? What happens then? So if you have very little money, you can't buy any tea and you can't buy uh, invite any students. So clearly the answer here should be zero. Here our answer is negative one because we say, hey, there's zero cups of tea we can buy, and therefore there's zero minus one, which is negative one students we can invite. That's something you might not think of, like you might not consider the possibility of having very little money, but it is something you really need to consider because it's, it's the, uh, an edge case in our program. So how do we fix that? Well, we say if um, if num students is less than zero, then print zero. So don't print negative one, otherwise print the number of students. So now we get zero, which is the correct answer. Um, yeah. And then let's actually test one more thing. What if you have exactly enough money to buy one cup of tea? I think that might be another edge case. That's 2,000. So what does that say? It's zero students. Is that correct? Well, yes. If you can only buy one cup of tea, then he's only going to buy a cup of tea for himself. He's not going to invite any students. So the correct answer to that is zero. So yeah. And then, I don't know, let's just try a bunch of numbers. Yeah. Um, 2001... Let's try 4,000. Let's, let's try 3,999. Yes, yeah, so if a cup of tea costs $2,000, then with $3,999, you can only buy one cup of tea. And with $1,999, that's not enough for 2,000. So that's correct. You can still invite only zero students if you have $3,999. But if you make it 4,000, now I can invite one student. That's also correct. Okay. So now we've kind of gone through a bunch of different test cases. And make sure like it can handle, you can't buy any cups of tea, you can only buy one cup of tea, you can buy exactly two cups of tea, you can buy exactly one cup of tea, you can handle uh, no money, you can handle having over $900 million. Now that we've kind of tested all that, I'm pretty confident in our program. I haven't written a formal proof that this is correct or anything, but like, I don't know. I feel pretty good about this. So yeah, let's submit this. Okay, again, use Python 2. I usually use C++, which is why that was said though, but like, I'm using Python for this, so. Python 2, not Python 3, because Python 3 is slow. Oh. Oh, yes, accepted. So we did, we did this correctly. This is the correct answer. This is how we code, okay. So yeah, um, that's how you solve delicious bubble tea. I guess only one person solved it last competition. So I guess the, I, I feel like what people forgot is this part, like the negative. Like I, I haven't talked to anyone about this, but like I feel like that's very easy to forget that like you cannot invite negative one students. That's not, that's not something you think of, but yeah, it's kind of important. So yeah, hopefully that made sense. Hopefully that process made sense. I hope you learned something, especially about how to find minimums. I think this technique, setting the minimum to infinity, and this technique, uh, updating the minimum when it's greater than the current cost, those are both very valid and like useful techniques that I've used in a lot of different programming problems. So if there's anything you take away from that, this problem, it's like, how do you find the minimum of a bunch of things? So yeah, hopefully that was useful and interesting, and see you next time.